Hey guys, Aaron here from Hacker Shack. I recently asked our Instagram account what they want to see from our channel um, because we have some downtime right now due to the whole COVID situation. So the overwhelming response from the Instagram channel was, we want to see how to build a website. And we want to see how to build that website using Python with the Django web framework. So if you're not familiar with Django, you can visit the djangoproject.com and it tells you all about what Django is. But in a nutshell, it's basically a web framework and it can be used to display web pages, connect to databases. There are a bunch of utility functions that are integrated into this framework, which make it easy to run migrations on data models or debug different features. And in case you guys don't know, we also have a website called thehackershack.com where we post various things like videos and blog posts. Uh, and th we've had this for a while, but embarrassingly, this has been running on Weebly for the last couple of years. Yeah, we're going to basically rewrite this whole website in Django. There are a couple features on this website. There are posts, like a, a blog post section. There's an about page that gives you a little information about me and Davis. Uh, and then there's also a contact page, which you can use to create an email and send it to our Hacker Shack uh, Gmail account. So these will be pretty easy to replicate with Django, um, but we're also going to add a few more features like a login button and a comment section in, on the blog post page. For our database, we'll be using Postgres because it seems like a common choice for Django projects and I'm also familiar with it. And I'll also teach you how to use Kubernetes for deployment and all the code will be available on our Patreon. So if you're having trouble keeping up with some of the steps in the tutorial, because it'll be a long tutorial and we'll be writing a lot of code, you can always download all of the code for the tutorial from our Patreon page. I'm going to assume that you have a basic understanding of Python for this tutorial. And if you don't um, know the basic things like how to create classes, how to run programs, uh, and, and things like that, you definitely want to make sure to check out a introduction to Python course before listening to this tutorial. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is open up our terminal and you're probably going to be wanting to use either a Mac or a Linux machine to do this um, for, for all your development. It's a little bit harder on Windows machines, but uh, to be fair, I haven't used the Windows machine for a while, so they might have gotten better in the last few years. But we're going to be doing this on my Mac. Um, it should be very similar steps on uh, a Linux machine. So first thing I'm going to do is go into a directory um, that we can use for this project. So I have a, a code directory locally, and I'm going to make uh, a folder called Django Websites. And we'll just navigate into that folder. Okay, so I need to get my environment set up. Since we're running Python, usually what you want to do is create a Python virtual environment. So to do that, I've already done this locally, but you're going to run, want to run brew update, which will make sure that brew is fully updated. Brew is what we're going to be using to uh, install something called Python virtual in. So the next thing would be to type brew install uh, pyenv virtual env. And this is what's going to be used to manage our virtual environment. Virtual environment is basically a place where you can install a bunch of dependencies for Python and not uh, conflict with other dependencies for other projects on your machine. Uh, there's usually multiple versions of Python that people use for different things. And we're going to be using um, Python 3.7.3 for this project. So I already have uh, PyN virtual in installed. So I'm going to make sure that I have Python 3.7.3 installed. To do that, I just type PyN virtual env and then the version number. And it will make sure that I have that installed. If you don't have it installed, it will do it for you. Next thing is I'm going to create a um, Python virtual environment. So I type PyN virtual M, uh, the version number, which was 3.7.3, and then the name of our Python virtual M. So I'm just going to call this Django website. And I usually 
um, put an add symbol and the version number just so I don't forget what version I'm running. And this will create a virtual environment for you. So for your project, you'll probably want to name it something else besides Django website, uh, maybe something that uh, corresponds to the name of your project. And then I'm going to take this Python virtual environment name, and I'm going to open up Vim. And if you don't have Vim installed, if you're on a uh, Linux machine, you can do sudo apt get install Vim. If you're on a Mac, I think you can just brew install uh, Vim, and it should install it for you. Uh, and then we're going to create a, a Python version file. And in here, we will just paste the name of our version. And now we are using the correct uh, virtual environment version. So I have this little tag here because I'm using uh, ZSH. Uh, it's actually pronounced Zish. Um, but uh, if you're not running Zish, you won't have this. Uh, and I can show you how to get that set up real quick. Um, so just to make sure that you have uh, the virtual environment running, you can type uh, pyenv virtual ems, and it will show you all your virtual environments. So I tested this earlier, so there's another version right here. But you can see that the active version is the one with the asterisk, and it has my Django website version right here. So if you're running Zish, you can easily add this stuff by doing two things. And this is optional. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. Um, but the first thing would be to install Oh My Zish. Uh, so let me just show you that project real quick. So this is a basically an open source project, which makes your terminal much better when developing on Linux systems. Um, or I guess Unix systems, doesn't have to be Linux. Uh, so you can easily install it by running this command. And uh, I already did it, but uh, you would just paste it in your terminal and hit enter to run that. And then it will add omizich to your bash profile. And then to get this little tag next to our terminal prompt here, all I have to do is add a few lines to our um, uh, zish rc file. So to do that, I can use vim uh, and then do vim tilde dot zshrc. And this will open up our zshrc file. Uh, all this stuff up here was just stuff that was added by the oh my zish um, install script. But if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see I have these few lines um, with uh, uh, that script that I was talking about, which adds the tag. I'll add this to the project code on the Patreon, so you don't have to type this out. Um, but if you add this and then hit Escape ZZ to save, and then press Control T to open up a new tab, it will load all of the scripts in that ZCHRC file, and you should see the version next to your terminal prompt here. OK, so now we have that created. I'm going to open up a um, IDE. And this is just going to make it much easier for us to develop because it has autocomplete and a bunch of other features, which are super handy. Uh, so I'll go up. So I'm using Visual Studio Code. You can use PyCharm or any other editor that you'd like. PyCharm is probably better because it just has a lot of stuff out of the box that you can use. Um, if you're using VS Code, you have to go into your updates or sorry, extensions and make sure that you have all the proper Python extensions. Uh, installed. Um, so I actually don't have this, so I should probably install it. OK, so then I'm going to go up to File, Open, and open up our Django website folder that I just created. And in here, you can see our Python version file. So if Vim didn't work for you, you can just uh, create a new file in your IDE called .python Python version, and then add your Python version here, and it should work the same. So the next thing we're going to do is create a folder called requirements. And this is going to be where we specify all the requirements for our website. Uh, so you're, if you're not familiar with Python, um, this is pretty basic stuff. But 
Python has something called pip, which is a package manager. And when you install a package with pip, it installs a specific version. So when we start up our website, we want to make sure that we have a bunch of specific versions installed for all of our packages. Django is one of the packages that we're going to have installed. Uh, so what we'll do is create a, a requirements file, which specifies the version that we want to use for this project. And generally it's in a, a text file. So I'm going to create a new text file and call this prod.txt. Prod.txt will have, and uh, sorry, make sure it's in your requirements folder. Prod.txt will have all the production requirements, meaning that when we deploy our application, we're not going to install anything that we use for local development. We can also create a file called dev.txt, which will have all of our local requirements. So when I install the requirements locally for development, I probably also want to install all the production requirements so that my website works. So we can specify that by pasting this command. So we're just saying that in addition to everything in dev.txt, we also want to install everything in prod.txt. Um, so if I go back to my terminal and I just type pip install dash r requirements slash dev.txt, it will install the requirements for our project. Now, you'll see that nothing is actually being installed here because we don't have any requirements in our dev.txt file. Um, but once we do, uh, they should be installed properly. The next thing that we want to do is install Django. So usually what I do when I install a new dependency is I just install it from the command line here. Um, so let's say uh, install Django. And this will collect and install that Django package that I was just showing you. When it's done, you'll see a version. So it says it's installed Django 3.0.7. So I'm going to take that version and I'll go to our prod.txt file and paste it in here. Now, like I said, I want to pin a specific version. So to do that, I just say Django equals equals and then that version name. And this will say that we only want to install Django 3.0.7. This version number right here is called a semantic version. And there are three components to a semantic version. One is the major, two is the minor, and three is the patch. So three major, zero minor, seven patch. And they correspond to different levels of releases. Patches are just simple bug fixes. Um, minor versions are new features that don't break um, things. And then the major version is a non-backwards compatible change, which can potentially break things. So what you usually want to do is say, I want to have this specific major and minor version, um, but I don't want to specify a patch version so that I get all the patch releases whenever I uh, download. Um, you could even do that with the minor version because technically it has changes that shouldn't break your release. But for now, I'm just going to set this equal to this specific version, and we can change that later. Now, to check to make sure Django is installed, we can run uh, Python, which starts up a Python shell that we can execute commands in. And let's just say import Django. Sorry, uh, lowercase Django. Um, so it's working, and we can print the Django version just to make sure it's still that 3.0.7. Uh, so if I do django.getVersion, uh, this will print the Django version, which is 3.0.7. I'm going to hit Control-D to exit that shell. And now let's create the boilerplate for our project. So Django comes bundled with this tool called Django Admin, which you can use to um, execute various CLI commands. One of those commands is a command to create our project. So if I type out Django hyphen admin, start project, and then the name of our project, which I'm going to call hacker shack, uh, shack underscore website, it will create the boilerplate for our project. So I can type LS and see that there's now this hacker shack website folder. If I go back to our IDE, 
I can see that it has a manage.py file. And it also has a folder with a module called Hackershack website. Inside of here, there are a few different files. One is a URL file, which we'll use to define the URL routes for our website, as well as a settings file, which has all of the basic settings for our website. And we will probably add more settings to this as well. And there are also two more files here, which are used for deploying the application. And we'll talk about those a little bit later. So this is just personal preference, um, but I don't like how Django creates this nested folder here. So I'm going to take uh, everything in this folder and move it into this top level Hackershack website folder. And then I'm going to take my manage.py and move it into the root directory. Again, this is just personal preference. Um, you could have just used uh, Django to create this in your code folder instead of creating a separate folder, but I'm just kind of moving these things around and then I'm going to delete that nested folder. So again, just removing the nested folder and moving everything up one level. So now I have requirements, my Hackershack website uh, folder right here in my manage.py top level. As I mentioned earlier, manage.py is one of the files that was generated when we created our Django project. And this is basically just an entry point for running commands that will help us run and start the server. So one of the things I can do with this is type Python manage.py and uh, after that, run server. And this will start our server for us. It complains about some unapplied migrations, but we'll worry about that in a second. Uh, but you can see down here, this uh, service is now started up on port 8000. So if I open up Google Chrome and I visit localhost, colon 8,000, you can see that my Django website is up and running and everything is working as expected. So I'm going to end this tutorial here. In the next tutorial, we're going to look at adding routes for different web pages. See you next time.